at the right place, and that is the house of the Lord. Amen. On a Sunday morning to worship Him. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord oh, is yes. good. Amen. Hallelujah. It's hard to tell someone how something tastes unless they taste it themselves. But to, this morning we have a, the, the opportunity to experience the Lord personally. So let's stand and begin to give Him the glory. Begin to worship Him oh, and welcome yes. Him to our presence. You, Jesus, we just glorify Your name. Lord, your love. Praise You, Lord Hallelujah. Jesus. We worship Hallelujah. You. Worthy Hallelujah. are You to be praised. And we thank You. Your presence here this morning. We thank you for your love and your grace, and we just ask, Lord, that you move in a special way. Oh, that we may experience your goodness. We may experience your love. Give him the praise and the glory this morning. Open up your hearts and your minds to him. Let Jesus have his way, Lord. We thank you. We glorify you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Give him the glory. Worship him. Open up your hearts. Set aside anything that happened to you this week. Jesus is ready to praise. We praise. Jesus is ready to, to touch your hearts. If you suffer all your life. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Worthy are you to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship him in song. And hopefully you can raise your voices a little higher than that worship that we just had at this praise this morning. I don't know if y'all are still trying to wake up this morning, but you know my Jesus is alive. He's worthy to be praised. The sacrifices of our praise is what the Bible says. Amen. So one more time before we sing, worship him and call upon that name. Jesus. Free, free, free. 
morning. Thank God for Calvary yeah. and a place of God's mercy in His love. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for Calvary, the place, Lord, where you died and you gave your very best for us, Lord. We may know your mercy and know your love, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you for the love that drew salvation's plan. Amen. Amen. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's turn to page 211. Let's sing that song. When I see the blood. Page 211. 211. When I see the blood. Are you grateful for the blood of Jesus this morning? Amen. Christ our Redeemer, Christ our Redeemer, He died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all His due. Restore your soul with the blood of the Lamb, and I will pass, will pass over you. When I see the blood, when I see the blood.
Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Today. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Happy Sunday. Yes, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this Sunday morning. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity to be in God's house today on this beautiful Lord's Day that He has made for us. Amen. 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 Hopefully you came to receive something from the Lord for your soul today. Amen. Good to see everybody here. And we're grateful, grateful for God's mercy this morning. Amen. amen. It's the mercy of God that got us up this morning. And started us on our way. Amen. 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 So we welcome you, everyone here today. We welcome you. We're glad you're here. We welcome everyone watching today online with us, our online church, as well as our in-person church. We're grateful for this opportunity today. God has a word for us today. Amen. God has a blessing Amen. for us. We're here today to do something, and that is focus on Jesus. Amen. 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 Focus on Jesus. Allow the Lord to... Touch your heart, allow Him to speak to your soul today in this meeting that we're here. The Bible says, with two or more gathered in my name, Jesus Amen. said, I would be in the midst of them. Amen. We believe that today. Yes. Jesus is in our midst. He's meeting with us. Amen. He's touching hearts. He's yeah. speaking to us today. Amen. Allow the Lord to speak to you this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Allow the Lord to just touch your heart and speak to you. And as he whispers in your ear today, listen to his voice. Amen. Listen to his voice because he's here to talk to us. Amen. Yes. He's here to talk to us. And, and I believe God has something he wants to tell us today. Yes, Amen. 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 He does. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a blessing to be here. A couple of items I want to make announcements about uh, this morning. Um, uh, first of all, a little bit of housekeeping items. Um, you that have children, uh, be mindful after the service uh, to be sure that if you have kids that are uh, receiving uh, food items or the goodies that Mary passes out, be sure that they're throwing their trash away, please. We're finding a lot of trash sitting outside that we know came from this building right here. Amen. And it shouldn't be that way. Amen. Uh, we got Amen. trash cans. All right. We got trash cans. Make sure your children, uh, and hopefully you're not guilty as an adult of leaving your trash behind. Amen. 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 Your mint wrappers and things of that nature. The parking lot is not a trash can. All right. Amen. Don't throw your cups out of your window as you leave. You know, from your hot chocolate or anything like that. Let's throw it away. Amen. Amen. Let's do our part to take care of the house of God and uh, pick up things. And we want we want to be able to be a blessing, right? And so uh, just let's do the right thing as a testimony as a testimony for our church, for our community, amen. and really not only in church, but everywhere you go. Yes, yes. Amen? amen? Everywhere you go. Everywhere. You should be mindful and mind, make your children mind as well. Amen. Make them mind, right? Right. Make them mind. It's our, our responsibility as adults to make them mind. So, uh, another item of housekeeping, be sure to remember to gel in and gel out. We want to do our part to stop the spread of germs and uh, any kind of virus, so we have the hand cleaner back there. Please use it on your way in and also on your way out. It's there for for everybody. Amen? It's there for everybody. So I don't like the way it smells. Well, too bad. I don't like viruses. <laughs> Amen? I don't like being sick either. So please be mindful and do, do the right thing for your neighbor, for your brother and sister, and let's help be responsible. All right. Uh, we got some birthdays this month. Uh, Brother Darren's birthday was Friday. Happy birthday to Darren. Uh, we have Joseph's birthday also on the 16th. If you see him or drop him a line on by text or something, uh, it's hard to find him on, on uh, Facebook or anything else. But if you know where he's at, reach him by text. Wish him a happy birthday. And uh, he may even be watching. Happy birthday, Joseph. And uh, also, Precious Birthday is this month. And also little Angel, Angel Nippon's birthday is also coming this month. So praise God for birthdays. Amen. Amen. Thank God for life. And remember them. Remember them. Uh, we have a special word. Remember, Reverend Love is coming next Sunday. Yes. Next Sunday. He's coming. We believe in God for revival. Amen. Next Sunday morning, he'll be here preaching. And he's going to be here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening. He's going to be here 
preaching these services and revival. Come. Come and believe. Come and receive something from the Lord. Amen? Amen. And let God bless you. Take a deeper walk with God in your relationship and let's get closer to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember when he was here last time he talked about being uh, big. Go big, right? Go better in God. Bigger in God. And, and we still need that. Amen? Amen? We still need that. And so believe God. Come pray and come believe. Invite a friend. Invite a family member to be in church with you. Uh, during these services, it's going to be a special time in the house of God. And we need a touch, and we're believing God is going to touch our hearts. Amen? Amen. Amen. Touch our church. So come, Amen. starting next Sunday, uh, Reverend Love will be here, and we're looking forward to that. And uh, at the end of the month, at the end of the month, we have a special blessing. At the end of the month. So after revival, there's one more week, and then at the end of the month, the last Saturday of this month, we're going to have a fellowship meeting right. here in Columbus. Yeah. Saturday, October 31st. Having fellowship meeting. And Pastor Keckel from Washington, he and his wife are coming here. And other churches are going to be coming here from all around the states, all around. We're going to come in and have a big meeting on Saturday. I'm not sure the time yet, but it's probably going to be 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll confirm that. And we're going to have a good time, and we're going to blow the roof off this place. Amen? Yeah. Come believe me. If you're able to come that Saturday, October 31st, it's going to be special. It's going to be loud. It's going to be anointed. It's going to be a good time in the house of God. Amen? And so come receive it, and believe God for a real blessing. Amen? Amen. And so just be in prayer with us for that service, and that God would have His way. And, uh, we're just believing and praying for something special. Amen. Amen. So, a lot of things going on this month, and I believe our God is wanting to bless us. Amen. Amen. Why are all these things happening? Because God wants to do something in our lives. Amen. Amen. God wants to do something here in Columbus, Ohio. Amen. Yes. Amen. In your church, in, in our church, in your lives, in your families. That's why. Amen. God's bringing His messengers here. And that's why things are happening, because God wants to do something. Amen? Amen. God wants to do something. Amen. And so, believe God with us, pray, invite someone to come to these special times in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, our ushers are going to come. They're going to help us today receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. We do know that all Christians pay tithe and cheerfully give in the offering as unto the Lord. And the Lord loves... A grateful, the sad givers, and uh, grumpy givers, and frowning givers. No, is that what the Bible tells us? For the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. A cheerful giver. You can give cheerfully, knowing that it meets the needs of God's house, and knowing that you're not just giving to a man, a church, an institution. You're giving it as unto the Lord today. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. We'll bless you for your giving. Let's pray for the gift and the giver. Let's pray for this offering. And you do what's right by the Lord today and follow his word. Let us pray at this time. Brother John, will you please pray, sir? Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sunday morning victory service in each soul here. We ask you to bless the gift and give. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
We give you the praise and the glory and the honor, Lord. For you are God and there's none beside you. Oh, go ahead and honor him. Lift your hands and praise him today. Lift your hands and praise him this morning. He is God today. You are God alone. Hallelujah. You are God alone. Are we here to worship the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. Are we here to worship the Lord today? Amen. This is a house of prayer. Hallelujah. This is a house of prayer. God, we worship you. You are God. Be exalted. Be exalted in every life, Lord. In a good time. glory. Be exalted, Lord, we pray. Lord, inhabit the praises of your people. There is no God like you. Lord, be exalted today. We seek your face, Lord. We seek your face and your will, O oh God, to be done in us. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is God today. He is God today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I wish I knew the words of the song. It was a song that I saw recently. Some people are I don't know. Some people. I don't know. I'm not going to try it. I don't know. Jarvo probably knows it. I'd call him up here to sing it. He probably could. I don't even know the name of it. <laughs> Something along the lines of some people are feed their God, yeah. and some people's God feeds them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I know the song. You know the song. <laughs> Some people feed yeah. their God. Yeah. Right? Some people yeah. feed their God. Why my God? But my God them. feeds me. Some people carry their God. Some people my carry God their carry God, me. but my God carries me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's the truth today, isn't yes. it? Amen. 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 Some people are feeding their God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But I'm glad we serve a God today that feeds us. Amen. Hallelujah. People carry their God around. They carry it around in their purse. They carry it around on their mantle. They carry it around in four wheels driving down the street. Hallelujah. But I'm glad my God carries me today. Amen. He carries me. Hallelujah. The Bible speaks of a God that has eyes and does not see. Has ears but does not hear, has a mouth but cannot speak. Yes. The God of this world, the false gods of this world, that's how they are. Yes. That's how they are. We serve a true and a living God today, and He wants Amen. to speak to you. Amen. He sees you and He hears you today. Amen. Yes. Amen. He hears you today. Amen. 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 Let's read in the Gospel of John this morning. The Gospel of John. Uh, chapter 6, we're going to read verses 5 through 11. The Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 5 through 11. Verse 5. And when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, 
Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Amen. Doesn't that sound good? Mm -hmm. As much as they would. Yes. Now I'll read verse 10 for a text here. And Jesus said, make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down. In the number, about 5,000. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach on a message today from that text. 5,000 reasons to believe. 5,000 reasons to believe. Let us pray and ask God's blessing this morning. Hallelujah. Sister Justina, will you please stand and pray this morning? Thank you. Our God and our Father, we thank you for your grace. Yes. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, O oh God, that continues to lead us to your house, to the place of worship, where we can hear your word, where we can feed on your insight, oh, yes. where we can learn of you, O oh God, Have your way, to become fit to chart the course of this life. Father, we have come again at the station to be refilled. Father, we pray that you help us, you open our spirit, man, that we will understand, that we will grasp what is being taught here today. God, yes. Thank you for your servant, O oh God, as you bring forth the word. Lord, empty him completely and refill him with your ocean from above. Lord, that the word will come as from you, O oh God. That your people will hear and become doers, O oh God. Thank you for your grace upon his life and his family. Continue to carry him and anoint him that he will speak your word. Those of our brothers and sisters that are not here but watching through the airways, O oh God, we pray that you bless them also. Thank you for this service in Jesus' name. Thank you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. 5,000 reasons to believe. There was a man one time that went to a counselor to discuss his marital problems. And the counselor felt that the man was just way too uptight. And he needed to really unwind and relax before he could uh, deal realistically with the problems that he was having. And so he suggested to the man who happened to be a, an avid jogger, someone who loved running, he suggested the man that he run 10 miles a day for two weeks and then call him back. And so two weeks had gone by, the man ran 10 miles a day, called the counselor back, and the counselor said, how you doing? The man said, I'm doing good, I feel great, I, I'm feeling relaxed. And the counselor, counselor asked, have you been doing your jogging? That guy recommended, he said, yes I have, just like you said, I've run 10 miles a day for the last 14 days. And the counselor said, okay, well, how's your wife doing? The man replied, how should I know? I'm 140 miles away from home. <laughs> How many know you can't run away from your problems? Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> That's probably not what the counselor meant. But we know today that there's just some things we have to face and have to deal with. Yeah. Yes. Amen. We know we can't run away from certain things. Yeah. If we could, we would. Yes. Amen. If we could, we would. Even Paul the great apostle, with all of his power and anointing and 
and the life that he lived for God, he even desired at one occasion to depart. He said, I'm in a strait betwixt two. I have a desire to depart. He wanted to go to heaven. He said, I have a desire to leave and go to heaven, but I'm in a, I'm in a conflict because I know it's more needful for me to stay here, Paul said, for the sake of the churches and the people and the ministry that needed to take place. And so he couldn't run away. And there's no running today. You know, we have a similar occasion in this Bible setting where the disciples had gone with Christ into a mountain area. They had gone away from the city where Jesus had been teaching. And the Bible says that a multitude of people followed Christ out of the city and they made it to this, this deserted type area well away, well away from the city and they had gathered and settled down and here the Bible tells us that the people, there was a great need, there was a great hunger. Because the people had traveled very far because they had seen the miracles of Christ. A great company had gathered there that day because they had witnessed the miracles. When you read in the first few verses, that's why they followed Christ. They had seen something and they were hungry for more of what they saw. They were hungry for more miracles. They were hungry for more of the supernatural. They had a desire to experience this thing that they were witnessing that they had never seen before. They didn't see this in the Pharisees. They didn't see this in the scribes. They didn't see this in the, the lawyers and the doctors of their day. They never saw eyes opened and people healed like Christ had been doing. And they wanted more. This great company had gathered and there they were out in this desert, this desert area and they got hungry and there was a great need. The Bible, I believe in uh, Mark's gospel, the synoptic gospel to this story tells us that the disciples had even uh, asked the Lord to tell the people to go away because there were so many that were there and they knew they could not feed them. And they knew they could not meet the demand that was there with all of that multitude. And the disciples had even told Jesus, let's just send them away. Send the multitude away because we can't deal with this. This was a problem. This was a, a great need that was way too big for the disciples to handle. And as we think about this text today, I wonder how many times in our journey as we're following Christ and pursuing the Lord because... I assume today every one of you is hungry for the supernatural. Yes. Amen. I assume today by you being here and by tuning in that you want something from God in your life. Amen. And you want God and you want His help and you, you just want something that no one else can do. Amen. Amen. And no doctor can do this Amen. morning. And no Amen. man or woman can Amen. do. And so we follow Christ because we desire more. We know that God is real. Amen. Amen. Many times we, we are faced as we, be, as we begin to seek the Lord. Many times we're faced with a great company and a great need as it was with the disciples that day here everyone needed something but the great company that was there it was so big and so large that the disciples in their hearts and minds thought there's no way we can handle this have you ever faced something that was so great and you thought, Lord, just send this away. I cannot handle this. Amen. This is too big for me. There's too many uh, obstacles. There's too many things. There's too much of this great company. Whatever that great company might be this morning in your life. There's a great company of people today we know that are living in fear. Yes. A great number of people that are living even without faith right now. Right. A great number of people who have issues, problems, concerns... Uh, and a lot of people just living in disobedience and living in sin. And these people, as we encounter this great company of people, we want to look at how this was handled, not only by the disciples, but how it was handled by the Lord. While the disciples wanted them to go away, Jesus said, no, don't send them away, you take care of it. Why? Because Christ believed in His disciples and he knew that the disciples could handle this great company if they only approached the company with faith and yeah. looked at the company and the challenge by faith in God. Jesus already knew what they could do if they had faith. Amen. 
Did you know today God already knows what you can do if you have faith? Amen. If you only believe in God, God already knows that that great company of things, whatever it might be, that you may be surrounded by, God already knows what you can do if you just put your faith in God. Amen. That's why he allowed the company to gather in the first place, because uh, he had something in mind that day. Amen? Amen? Why does God allow a great company of things at times? Because God already knows what he wants to do. Amen. God already has a plan. God already has something he's trying to accomplish uh, in our lives. They were hungry. But this great need was way too big for the disciples to even handle. Mm -hmm. And it was so great that the Bible, the Bible tells us that Jesus would even begin to tell the disciples, uh, I want you to take care of it, uh, and I want you to handle it. Uh, amen. Don't try to pass the buck. Mm -hmm. Don't try to put it off on someone else. Uh, wow. And don't try to get someone else to do what you know in your heart you're supposed to do. Uh, amen. amen. By His grace. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things that only you can do today. Mm -hmm. There are certain battles that only you can fight. There are certain mm -hmm. things that only you can take care of. Uh, and guess what? If God brought you to it, uh, mm -hmm. He will bring you through yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Morning, uh, that great company, no matter what it is, uh, he already knows what he wants to do, but he wants you to get in line with him and have faith. Amen. Amen. This we can call a great need. The great need was so large, and it really reminds me of the Old Testament passage in 2 Kings uh, about Elisha and his servant, uh, as Elisha, we know, was the the uh, forerunner to Elijah. Elisha caught the mantle of Elijah the prophet, and he got a double anointing from Elijah the prophet, and he went on performing twice as many miracles as the man of God Elijah did. And there was one, one occasion where they were in their house, uh, and the servant woke up one morning. He went outside to get a breath of fresh air, and he looked around, and they were surrounded by the enemy that was trying to kill Elisha. Why? Because Elisha, being a prophet and a man of God, was stirring things up, and the people didn't like it. And here the servant of God comes out, and he sees all of these people, and they were surrounded by chariots and by the armies that were against the prophet and Israel. And the servant went back inside and said, Elisha, man, man what are we going to do? He began to ask Elisha, what's going on? What are we going to do? We're going to perish. You've got to come see this outside. And the servant was afraid because he did not know how to handle this great company of the enemy that had come against him. Elisha comes out, uh, maybe wipes the sleep out of his eyes, yawns a little bit, uh, looks at this great company that was there, and he began to pray. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He began to look to God. And you know, the first thing he told the, the, the servant that he had there, he said, don't be afraid. He said, there's more for us than there is for the enemy. Yeah. And he prayed a prayer, and he prayed that God would open the servant's eyes. And it was a simple prayer, and his eyes were open, the scripture says, and he began to see. He began to see something that he never saw before, and that was a greater company, a greater multitude of chariots and angels and chariots of fire that were gathered around the enemy, because the enemy may have surrounded him and them, but God's army surrounded all of it, and he showed him that day that God was in control. He proved to him that day that there's more for us than there is for our enemy. He said, God today knows how many there are against you, but he also wants you to know how many there are for you. sometimes and pray, God, open my eyes, because all I see is the enemy. All I see is this company. All I see is this list of all these things that I've got against me in my life. Brother and sister, God says, stop looking at that. Start looking up. Start looking in faith. And start counting the things that are for you and the blessings that God has promised you. The Bible says, 
as their eyes were open, and we know the rest of that story, God took care of them, God blinded them, and even turned them over, and it's an awesome, powerful story, amen, of a truth that many times we think that we're surrounded, but there's someone surrounding them, amen. The greater the battle, as it's been said, the greater the victory. Amen. And here we find in the Bible setting a great need, a great company, a great uh, a situation that was so big for the disciples. But the Bible says that Jesus asked them a question in verse 6. He asked them in verse 5 and 6 rather. He says, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? He turns to his disciples and asks them, where are we going to buy bread so that all these people can eat? Jesus asked the disciples this. Hey guys, where are we going to go buy bread for them? And the scripture says this he said to prove them. Because he himself knew what he was going to do already. Amen. Come on. He asked them the question, how are we going to supply all the bread for all of these people? But this was only a test to the disciples. This was only a test. What does the word say? To prove them. The word prove means to test, to put to the test, to find out what it's made of. When you prove something, you're testing it. Amen. Everything that we use these days is proven. We use things to prove them. Before uh, the products that we, that we use and before they're put out on the, for sale in the stores, they're proven, they're tested. You see little tags sometimes, QC, number 506. Uh, somebody was a tester for that product uh, because they have to go through a testing process before they're sold to the public. Amen. Amen. To make sure that it's good enough. Well, we know sometimes uh, it's not proven good enough and it breaks anyway, right? Sometimes it's not proven well enough and there's a recall, <laughs> right? And they have to re replace it and fix it. And that just speaks to maybe just the inadequate uh, testing process or whatever. But everything in life has to be tested. Concrete, the foundation of your house had to be tested. Amen. The wood that supports your, your roof over your head, it has to be tested. Amen. The clothes you wear, they are tested. Amen. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was testing his disciples. Guess what? You and I, we will be tested in this life. Amen. Your Christianity will be tested. Your faith will be tested. Your family will be tested. Your marriage will be tested. Your relationship will be tested. Amen. Your strength will be tested. Everything about you today, as we serve God, God is going to ask us questions, just like He did the disciples. How are you going to take care of this? With the intention of proving us to see what we're made of. Amen. Remember, this is only a test. For the disciples, it was only a test to see, uh, see their faith. It was only a test to test what they were going to do. Were they going to send the multitude away? Were they going to face the challenge knowing that Christ was there and God was with them? Or were they going to give up and give up hope? Or were they going to at least try to do something to meet the need that was there at hand? What do we do in the time of testing that proves who we are? What do we do in the time of trial that proves who we are? What do we do in the times, uh, amen, that are stressful and whatever else it might be, whatever company comes our way, our response to the question, so to speak, uh, is the result of our test. Amen. Amen. Our response is the result of our test. If you still get flying mad at people and lose your temper at the drop of a, a drop of a dime, then guess what? You fail that test. Yes. And that test is going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming until you learn how to pass that test and by the power of the Holy Spirit bring your emotions into check and let Christ rule and reign in your heart the way that it ought to be. Amen. Amen. If you still Amen. give in to temptation, you're, you fail that test. When the question is asked by the Lord and when it's posed to us, we need to remember this was only a test to prove the disciples. Jesus already knew what he wanted to do. Yes. He already knew how he was going to handle it. He just wanted to know about the disciples' faith. Just like he does ours today. Right. He wanted to know what they would do. Will they have faith? Will they make excuses? 
Well, they accept the challenge. They responded to the Lord. 200 penny worth is not enough to feed so great a multitude that everyone may take a little. That's what Philip said. Philip said 200 penny worth is not enough. In our dollars, it's about $96. 100, 100 bucks, let's say. 100 bucks won't go very far to feed 5,000 people. Amen. 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 Especially in our, our prices these days. They said 200 penny worth. What were they looking at? They were looking at what they had in their possession. That's all they had, 200 penny, 200 denarii or whatever it may have been at that time. About 100 bucks, that's all they had. right? They had something, and they looked at what they had to try to answer the question of Christ with what they had. Are you following me here? And they answered, 200 penny worth is not enough. And then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, responded and said, Well, Lord, there's a lad here. And this lad has five loaves, five barley loaves, and he has a few small fish. But what are these among so many? What are these among so many? And here they were with the question, the age-old question that so many people are still asking, what is this compared to that? Amen. 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 What is what I have compared to the great company that's surrounding me? What is the strength that I have compared to the battle that the devil's brought to my doorstep? What is this strength or faith that I have compared to what I have to deal with when I leave church this morning and go back home? What is this compared to so many? And this, Jesus said, just to test them and prove them. Well, we know the end of the story. And if we can just insert in here in another passage in another gospel, Jesus said, bring them to me. There may be only five loaves, but give that to me. Yes. There may be only two fish, but give that to me. Yes. And we know, amen, when we give to Christ, he's able to do more with what we give him, amen, amen, amen. than what we don't give him today. Yes. And if we would just learn to take what we do have amen. and give it to Christ, yes. take what we do have yes. and bring it before God oh, in subjection oh, and yes. obedience, oh, yes. and not say, this is all I've got, how can I overcome it? But say, Lord, I've got some strength but I need you to multiply it. I need you to make it greater. I need you to make it bigger. I need you to do what I have more than I can do by myself. Hallelujah. And we need to learn today to take what little we have and not compare it and say, what is this among so many? And how am I going to deal with this? But rather say, Lord, if it's in your hands, it's going to do something. Amen. It's better in the hands of God morning. Why? Because He is able today to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Amen. According to the power that works in us today. Amen. 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 But what do we do with what we have? We need to give it to God. So many people just quit and don't even do anything because they say what they have is not enough. And some people don't even try. Some people don't even try rather than take what they do have and try with what they have. Amen. Because you have something. Amen. You have something today. Yes. And just because the something you have, you may feel like it's not enough, does not mean uh, it's time to quit. It does not mean that it's time uh, to go the other direction or that it's not going to work out. But you need to work with what you have. Amen. And let God do more. Amen. Amen. Let God do more with it. That's what the disciples were dealing with. We have 200 pennies. Mm -hmm. We got five loaves and two fish. Mm -hmm. This is all we have. Mm -hmm. And it's important to understand what we do have. Mm -hmm. As they took inventory. And they took inventory and saw what they had. And Christ wanted them to see where they were. Because you, you'll never get to where you need to be. Unless you know where you are first. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Your GPS won't work. Mm -hmm. You put in an address, but if it doesn't know where you are, mm -hmm. it can never give you directions to where you're going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, right. And we need to know where we are. Mm -hmm. And to know where we are, we just have to be honest. Mm -hmm. Amen? We just have to be honest. Where are we right now? Mm -hmm. Right? 
Would you? Pastor. <laughs> Where are we with God? Where are we spiritually? Where are we, whatever level we are, where are we right now? Mm -hmm. And be truthful and be honest. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I've got this company. I've got this going on. I've got this faith. I've got this failure. Mm -hmm. I've made this mistake. Mm -hmm. And just be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot get to where <laughs> you need to be unless you know where you are. Amen. Yes. Amen. Accept it and be honest. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't, you can't go forward. Mm -hmm. You won't pass go. You won't collect $200. Mm -hmm. you won't go forward. <laughs> did they forget what God did before? <clears throat> Book of Psalms, chapter 78, tells us, verse 19 and 20. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, He smote the rock, and the waters gushed out, and the streams overflowed. Can He give bread also? Can He provide flesh for His people? Note their question. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God... <laughs> He had done it before for his people. He had multiplied. And this is the reference of the Israelites where God provided something out of what little they had. He smote the rock and waters flowed. He multiplied and rained bread from heaven. He provided. And the question, can God? Can God? The devil asked that question today to try to get us to doubt. But we need to ask the question today to prove that God can. Can God? Yes, He can. They asked the question, and we know the answer was yes, God provided. And God met their every need. There are tests today that we need, that we have faced and that we will face. You can avoid tests. But the Bible says there's no test or temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but with, at, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. No, you are not the only one going through what you're going through. Amen. Amen. You may feel like you're the only one. It may seem like you're the only one. But that's just the lying spirit of the devil trying to get you to feel isolated and trying to get you to feel like there's no help and there's no hope for your situation. But remember, there's no test, there's no temptation that you or I or ever deal with, but that is not, that's already common to man. Yeah. And the best part of that is that God will not allow you to be tempted more than you are able. Oh, yes. Someone said amen. amen. Because with the temptation, he also makes a way to escape. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. With the test, he also gives us the answer key, if you will, so that we can pass the test and be all that God wants us to be today. Amen. You see, the disciples, all they had to do was realize that God was in this. And God was in control. And if they just trust God, that He would make it, He would make the miracle come to pass. Amen. I'm closing in just a few moments here. There was a great management. So we have a great company, a great need, a great test. And now we find the great management of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says Jesus told them, and as the Lord heard what they said, He said, make the men sit down. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. He said, make the men sit down. Before Jesus could perform the miracle, He had to bring control and organization to the situation at hand. He could not have 5,000 men just all scattered and running around everywhere. And if he began to make bread, how many of them people would just jump at it and, and begin to bring chaos? And Because there needed to be organization before there could be a miracle Amen. in this case. Amen. And that's why Jesus said, make them sit down. Let's bring some order to this chaos. Let's bring some order to this mess. And the Bible says he sat them down by 50 and by 100. He began to put them in companies, row by row, side by side, began to line them all up so that when the miracle began to be poured out, there would be no confusion, there would be no problem, Everyone would get what they needed, and there wouldn't be anything amen, that was unfair. There had to be organization. And just look at how Jesus managed this 
today. Look how Jesus managed it. Amen. Amen. We need to, in a similar way, make the man sit down. Not of order. Amen. Not just the man, the men. <laughs> The men of the great company in your situation or your battle, you got to make them sit down. Amen. you got to bring control to it. Yes. Make your thoughts sit down. Mm -hmm. Make your feelings sit down. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Make it sit down. Amen. Bring your subjection to who? Amen. To Jesus Christ. Amen. Doesn't the Bible tell us to bring every thought in the captivity of Christ? Mm -hmm. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you got to bring control to it in order for there to be a miracle first. Amen. And Jesus was managing the situation, and everyone was what brought into subjection of Christ. Here they were, make them sit down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I can do anything, there's got to be some order here. Amen. Amen. We got to clean some things up, bring some discipline, put things in order, and when it's in order, all right, then I can work my miracle. Amen. Amen. I don't know what kind of company you got going on and what kind of need you have, but you need to bring some management to it. Amen. You need to get it in order. Let it not be chaotic and let it not run your life. And don't Amen. let the situations, your thoughts, whatever it might be, run you crazy. But bring it down at the feet of Jesus. Amen. And finally, and once and for all, believe that Christ is able. Amen. Make Amen. It sit down. Hallelujah. Make it sit down. Make the men sit down. Make the women sit down, too. <laughs> Make the kids sit down. Amen. Make it sit down. Yes. They had to bring management to it. I'm talking about 5,000 reasons to believe. Amen. After the management, there was a miracle. Yes. You know why some people skip that part and they never see the miracle? Mm -hmm. Because they never bring... Those things that are out of control, they never bring them into control in their life. Amen. They never bring it into control in his subjection. Some people don't have peace. Yes. They don't have peace because they don't bring those thoughts into control. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Some people don't have love mm -hmm. because they don't bring the, those bitter, hateful thoughts and resentment that yes. they have. They don't bring it into control and make it sit down. Yes. Yes. Amen. At Jesus' feet. Because yeah. doesn't the Bible tell us, mm. right, if we don't forgive men their trespasses, right, when you forgive people, you make it sit down. Yes. You put it to rest. Yes. When you have bitterness towards somebody, when you have hate, whatever it might be, this is a company mm -hmm. that as long as it's moving about, oh, yes. it'll never receive the miracle Amen. that God wants it to have. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. 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 He made them sit down. And he performed a great miracle. Yeah. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Amen. As much as they Amen. would. They ate as much as they wanted to. Amen. There was so much bread and so much fish for them, they ate until... Their tummies were tight. <laughs> you could bounce a quarter off of their bellies. It was so tight. Because they ate as much as they wanted to. As much as they needed. I believe God wants to bless us with a miracle. Yes. Amen. To where there's as much as we need. Yes. And then some. Amen. Amen. If we would believe. Yes. Jesus simply took the loaves. And he gave thanks. I remember, I remember as I close for the third time. <laughs> I remember going to a doctor some time ago with uh, Brother Darren. He had a surgery. And I remember this doctor, I think he was maybe a Hindu or uh, some different type of religion. And I remember this doctor. He, he just he surprised me. Because one of the, uh, the advice that he was giving him, he even brought up Jesus. And he told him one of the keys to healing is to be grateful. Yes. Be grateful. And he used the story how Jesus would multiply the bread. And the Bible says all that Jesus did was he 
gave thanks. Yes. It was like Jesus said, thank you, Father. Yes. And then he just began to multiply. Hallelujah. He was thankful. Yes. And I remember that advice that was given to the brother. I'm like, whoa, that is, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I just never really heard it brought out in that way, how that faced with such a great need. The first approach that we should have, and still have, is we should still be grateful. Amen. Yes. And even in the face of that great company, Jesus, he just gave thanks. Amen. You see, you, have, you get a miracle when you are thankful yes. for what you have. I read something, I read something that said if, what if, how did it go? What if all, what if God blesses you tomorrow? with everything uh, that you were thankful for today. Something to that effect. Yeah. What if all you had tomorrow were the things that you were thankful for yesterday? Something to that along those lines. Yeah. Think about it. Jesus just began to give thanks. Yeah. He just began to give thanks. We know there are challenges. Mm -hmm. We know there are issues. We all have been touched by them. But what does the Bible teach us over and over and over again? In everything, give thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Amen. It's that thankful, grateful spirit that God still delights in. And God can bring about a miracle. Yeah. There's so many reasons to believe today. This is just one story of 5,000 reasons. Jesus gave thanks. And there was a miracle. Amen. I believe sometimes we just get our eyes off of the problem and stop complaining. Mm -hmm. And just be grateful. Yes. And have a heart full of praise. Amen. I believe we'll see more miracles. Amen. 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 We just have the right mindset yes. of faith. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. It doesn't mean we don't have needs. It doesn't mean we don't ask God for things. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us to make every request known unto God and all these yes. things. Yes. But approaching the Lord with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, the Bible Amen. says. Let it all be made known unto God. Amen? Amen. 5,000 reasons to believe. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our heads today. As we look to the Lord, God wants to do it. He wants to multiply something today in your heart, and your life. As we look to God for prayer, as we open the altars for prayer this morning, let the Lord Jesus Christ do something that only He's able to do today. Mm -hmm. Let Him surprise you today. If there's something, a multitude, a company, something in your life that, that is out of control, you've, allowed, you've allowed to get out of hand, whatever it might be, today's the day to make it sit down. Make it sit down at the feet of Jesus. And let God begin to multiply what He wants to do in your life. As we find a place to pray, God bless you, church. God bless you. As we pray, these altars are open for prayer. Let's gather. Let's seek the face of God. I believe God wants to multiply. He wants to do something. Make it sit down today. Make it sit down today.
stand and give the glory this morning. Hallelujah. Worship Him and thank Him today. Isn't He worthy this morning? and praise the Lord. Let's close with this song, this chorus. Is God multiplying anything in anyone's life today? Amen. Have you made something sit down this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. I believe God has spoken. He had a message for us today. Amen. To make some things sit down. Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. It's been good to be in God's house today. Remember how the Lord has spoken to you today in this service and this message. Hide His word in your heart. Hold fast your profession of faith, the Bible says, without wavering, for He is faithful that promise. Amen. You go with God today. God will do what? Go with you. Go with you. Amen. And don't forget, tonight, Service 6.30. We'll be back in the house of the Lord. 6.30 service. Come back tonight. If you can make it, come join us. And also Tuesday Bible study. Come join us for Tuesday Bible study at 7.30. You know the schedule throughout the week. And be in prayer with us as we begin special revival services next Sunday morning. Amen. 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 God bless you is our prayer. Love one another. Gel in and gel out. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you.